see a bunch of silhouettes. I just see a bunch of uh, head and hair, basically, but uh, how, how's everyone doing today? Thank you very much for having me. Um, I had a, a fun solo day in uh, Las Vegas yesterday. I uh, got in around 2.33, 
walked around, had a couple day beers on the strip, as one does, and uh, had plans, big, big plans of going out for a solo nice dinner, you know, treating myself. Went back to the room around 8 o'clock, uh, told myself I'd leave in half an hour, and I never left the room last night. So my big solo night in Vegas ended about 8.45 p.m. last night. But I did have two and a half beers during the day, so I got a little crazy. Anyone have any questions? Well, I guess I'll just sit here and talk then. <laughs> I am planning on exploring Vegas a little bit this evening. Uh, by exploring, uh, like the good Canadian kid I am, I actually mean I'm going to try and go to the Vegas Golden Knights game. <laughs> try and see some hockey and see where the night takes me. Did I just hear Stuart in the back there? Stuart! <laughs> Is Evan here? Is Roldy here? <laughs> And uh, tomorrow I'm working all day, and then I'll probably, um, here there's some good spots. I don't know if there's any locals here, but the spot called Cleaver I keep getting uh, recommended. <laughs> That's a good thing. And Herb and Rye. I hear that's a good spot too. But uh, hopefully they're open past uh, 5 p.m. Because <laughs> two hours too late for me. I'm not 19 anymore, I'm realizing that. Like I was like, a solo Las Vegas night will be good, I'll go to the casino. I actually watched people gamble for about 25 minutes last night. And I just didn't have it in me. Uh, I'm not much of a gambler. I am going to gamble $20 at the roulette table here before I go. Uh, I'm going to put 20 on black, and uh, we'll see how it goes. And I'll just build from there, and I'll go home um, a millionaire. It's as simple as that, really. <laughs> Got a question? That's no a, questions. That's a, yeah. Hey! Let's go. I can't see anybody. This is incredible. Um, Not in a good way. So I'll continue our previous. Um, what was your favorite scene to film on Letterkenny so far? A Letterkenny question off the bat. Favorite scene of Letterkenny. <clears throat> I really enjoy the group scenes all the time. Um, getting all the cast and characters together in one room is kind of like a Royal Rumble, I like to say. Like all the... All the people can be as silly as they want to be and as crazy as they want to be. Uh, one of my favorite scenes I shot actually was with Jared Kiso, uh, the Valentine's Day episode, I'd say. Um, Jared, who plays Wayne, he's also the creator of the show. He and I have been friends for probably 14 years now. We did a miniseries together in Canada, and that's how he cast me in the show, the show originally. Um, so we have a scene where we're discussing hockey players and hockey fighters and stuff like that. So it's Stuart and Wayne, and th these two characters historically never get along, and we spent a whole, uh, a whole day just doing a scene, me and Jared. So that was a pretty good, good scene as far as like a personal moment with me and Jared coming a long way. But the, uh, the, the Spelling Bee episode was probably my favorite group uh, experience because we were all there just being super, super silly. And that was early on in the Letter Kenny adventure, you know. We, didn't, we had no idea that the show would be what it, it now has become, and that was pretty early days. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. You got someone over here now. <laughs> Hello. I need my sunglasses. I think um, it's your turn. Okay, I'm on. Um, first off, I, I really liked um, your acting abilities and how you were able to be tortured and looked so miserable. <laughs> and so good job. <laughs> Anyways, you're great at it. Thanks. So my question is, so as an angel, I'm, I'm sure that you were amazingly powerful, but then you were put in like a teen body and had to do that. So how did you imagine? Only 23. <laughs> Your angel persona. Can you, can, you, can you say that last part again, please? How did you imagine yourself as an angel? Because, like, <laughs> as a human body, it uh -huh. wasn't as... Powerful. Well, like, you know, <clears throat> I just basically took all of my natural instincts and reversed them. Uh, I was like, um, probably not going to do that. Um, the, angel, the angel thing was, was really freaking sweet, you know? Um... Didn't really know to what extent that role was going to be when I first signed up, and I, I shared a fun little story just earlier, but that hot, uh, hot dog uh, wiener hut outfit, uh, the red and white stripes and the silly hat with the hot dog on the head and all that stuff, um, I was, uh, I'm kind of changing the, your story here, but I'll get back to the angel thing. I was in downtown Vancouver, we had just filmed a couple scenes in this hot dog outfit, and, uh, and I went out to catch a, a little bit of fresh air. 
and uh, some, a group of cute girls walk by and they kind of make eye contact with me and they kind of smile and I kind of smile back and I was like, oh wow, I'm feeling pretty good today. And then I turn around, I look in the mirror, the reflection of the, the storefront and I was like, no, no, those women were definitely laughing at me. Uh, they weren't flirting, they weren't putting positive energy out there, they were in fact laughing at me because I have a hot dog wiener uh, on my forehead. Um, <laughs> the angel thing was interesting because like, when I got to set, the, uh, the, cr the cast sort of filled me in on the uh, magnitude of the angels in that world and uh, uh, getting to talk to Misha a little bit about that before he, uh, of course, stabbed me in the heart uh, was, uh, was uh, I'm just very happy to be part of the, the, angel, the angel story in uh, Supernatural. I, I understand how important that is to a lot of people. And, um, I just tried to hold my own in that room with Mark Shepard and Misha and Jared and Jensen, you know, it's a lot of uh, star power in that room and uh, sometimes you just kind of try and hold your own, you don't really have much say in the matter. Thank you. Thank you. We got one over there? Hey Tyler. Hello. How you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you doing? Uh, I was just wondering if you had any, any stories to share uh, about the guys, uh, including Mark or Misha, Jared and Jensen, from your time on the set with Supernatural. Yeah, so I was fortunate enough, thanks for the question, I was fortunate enough to um, be in season one as well, the Bugs episode. I don't know if you guys remember that one. <laughs> That was the nicest anyone's ever reacted to that. Because people don't seem to like that episode. It wasn't that bad. Um, my first time on uh, Supernatural, I was 18 years old. I had just booked this guest star, and it was season one. So Jared and Jensen were, you know, they had very solid careers, but it wasn't the season 15 of this amazing show that we're all... Uh, a part of now, but um, I remember they had these little scooters that they would just scoot around set. Uh, they were like little children, you know, and I remember the energy that they um, brought to set, just being so much fun and carefree. They would scoot around. Um, I remember Jared had a dog on set, and he actually invited me into his trailer. I'll, I'll never forget this, actually. I was just a guest star, right? So I was there for three days, maybe four days. And Jared's like, hey, I'm on The Ellen Show later today, do you want to come to my trailer and watch with us? And I was like, yeah, that'd be freaking awesome. So we sat in Jared's trailer and we watched his appearance on Ellen DeGeneres. And I remember just thinking how cool it was for this guy to invite me in, this person that he just met and included me in this amazing moment. Um, uh, I won't forget that one. And he also, I think it was Jared who had his who was stung on the day of uh, bugs. That's a pretty good story. I think he's probably told that one too. They did tests to make sure none of us were allergic to the bees. And then of course, I think Jared ended up accidentally sitting on one and stinging his butt. Uh, so that's a pretty good one as well. Um, and then season eight, when I came back, you know, these are, these are men who have established this show. They're, I don't know how many episodes a season, but they're season eight. And uh, there were some pranks that went on that day, uh, rest assured. And I don't think this was their doing, but I mentioned uh, when I was tortured, I had that crown on my head, and I was actually taped, not taped, but probably tied to the chair. Uh, we broke for lunch, and they forgot to release me. <laughs> so I'm sitting in this chair with my hands tied and this metal crown on my head, and, and the, the crown's digging into both of my, my temples. So my head's starting to hurt, and I've been screaming all day. And, uh, you know, I don't want to be a complicated, difficult actor. So the last thing I'd want to, to ask is for someone to untie me so I could eat lunch. Um, they did come rescue me eventually. I don't think that was Jared or Jensen, but I wouldn't put it past them, to be honest with you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Leads into my question. You were one of the few actors who played two different roles and didn't die in between. And so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the audition process for season one, and if you had to re-audition for Alfie in season eight, or what that what that process was like. Were you on like a short list because you were already part of the family? I'd like to say that, yeah. No, they offered me both roles. Uh, they wanted me to be there for way longer, but I was busy. Essentially, is kind of what happened. Uh, <laughs> No, so I auditioned, I was 18 years old for the Bugs episode, it was a guest star, 
it would have been my second guest star appearance. And you guys know what guest star means, right? It's like a, an actor or a character who comes in for one episode, maybe two episodes, and the episode sort of features that character. And I was working with my dad. My dad owns an auto glass business, a mobile auto glass business. And I was working with him, and I got the call from my agent. Uh, again, I had just graduated high school. They're like, hey, Supernatural, they liked your audition, they want to cast you. And I remember getting that, <laughs> my dad, my dad still brings this up. <clears throat> I, uh, I remember getting the phone call and basically just quitting on my dad, like, halfway through the day. I was like, Dad, I got this job coming up. Like, I am set. Meanwhile, it's three days on set, you know. I'll be unemployed by next Friday. Um, so that was, uh, that was a funny story my dad still likes to tell. He's like, yeah, you called your mom as soon as you got the job for her to come pick you up. I was like, I was 18. I don't know why my mom was picking me up still. Um, and then I went back uh, to audition for Samandrio, um, Alfie, and uh, yeah, they, you know, same sort of audition process. I think they just kind of narrowed down which actors have been there recently and maybe which ones had more prominent roles. Matt Pike was, uh, you know, a very fun role, but it wasn't a super, super prominent role. And um, they asked me to come back as, as Samandrio, as Alfie, and, and they told me one or two episodes, and then it ended up being, I think, like five episodes. Uh, which was which was very very cool, and I, I know I joked about this at previous conventions, but uh, we uh, we like to joke that maybe Matt Pike ran away from his dad, who was a bit of a jerk, and then became Alfie, and then opened up a hot dog vending thing. And so maybe there's like some more depth to it. We'll explore that next season. Uh, <laughs> it be good. Just a typical audition process, and um, I'm grateful that I got to do the show the second time because I, I I don't think I'd be here without that uh, second appearance. Thanks for your question. Hello. Uh, thank you for turning the lights down a little bit. I can actually see some people. Is that what's happened? Gosh, you know everything. You were great on the uh, Robin Rich podcast. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that was fun. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that was fun. But, uh, so there's lots of back and forth in Letterkenny with the really quick, uh, I don't know, Dialogue? expressions or whatever, yeah. like shell. I had no idea what that was. There are so many Canadianisms, I think, that I have to, we have to pause, Google it, go back, watch again. Do you know what they all are when you see them in the script, or do you have to look anything up first? Well, yes, yes. So, Chell is what you said. So, the NHL, the video game. Uh, being a Canadian hockey player, I do understand some of that slang a little bit more intricately. But my character, for anyone who hasn't seen Lighter Kenny, he's a very, very smart guy. He's, um, he does monologues, he loves Shakespeare, he loves books. And uh, I like to read books too, but I don't have a great vocabulary. Where my eight, uh, my character Stewart has a fantastic vocabulary. So basically, when I prepare for the role um, the night before, I have to Google fifty percent of my dialogue <laughs> and figure out the pronunciation, how, how I'm actually going to say these words, what these words actually mean, uh, so I don't show up the next day and just say a bunch of dialogue that has no meaning to it. So my character, I never know what he's talking about until I f figure it out. But the hockey players on this show, I seem to know everything they're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what that says about me, unfortunately, but... Ooh. Chuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've watched. Hello. Hi, Tyler. You can see me now, right? I can see you. Um, my question is, since you are one of, I think, the, the few who have played multiple characters on the show, do you have a favorite? Of the two that I played? Uh, of, of the, yeah, of the characters that you've played on the show? I'm not going to pick a favorite. Um, <laughs> they're very different to me, and I love my kids equally. Uh, that being said, the, uh, the Matt Pike <clears throat> um, booking for me was really, really big in my young career. I just graduated high school. I wasn't really, I wasn't making money as an actor. You know, I was working with my dad at this auto body shop that I was just kind of telling you guys about. And so that was a big sort of indication of like, hey, maybe I can make a living uh, doing this, you know? Maybe I will be able to do this for the years moving forward. So that Matt Pike booking was very, very special. Coming back years later as a more confident actor, I've been doing some more television movies and things like that. I was able to kind of enjoy the Samandriel experience a little bit more. And of course, it going four episodes and me having sort of what would be considered in some cases like a cool, I don't know, cool might not be the right word, but like an iconic sort of wardrobe uh, has been pretty pretty neat to see people dressing as that from time to time. And of course, like 
getting tortured was pretty awesome, and then and then being stabbed was pretty cool too. So I'd probably, you know what? I'll, I'll say Symmetrio. <laughs> oh, look what you've done! <laughs> now Matt's gonna be jealous. Thanks for your question. Hi there. Um, Hello. Hi, I'm Adriana, and I'm from Victoria. British Columbia. Yes, very exotic. <laughs> um, so I know you from Supernatural, and I was only recently I realized you were in Letterkenny, which I have not watched, and I was reading that it just finished season 12. Yeah. Congratulations on the show for that. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, pretty cool. For one who is maybe considering starting Letterkenny, given that there are 12 seasons, do you have a recommendation of where one should begin watching? Or you, got, you need to start from the beginning. You gotta start from the beginning. I could give you some favorite episodes, but you, you're gonna wanna start from the beginning. Because the show, just like Supernatural, evolves throughout time, and you want to appreciate the first episodes that will help you appreciate the later episodes. The first season is ridiculous. Uh, there are some very silly episodes. A fan, I, I don't wanna say like, I don't wanna like feed your, your narrative or anything, but one of the episodes in the first season is a fan it's very divisive between the fans. Some fans love it, some fans don't love it. I don't even want to tell you the episode. Do you, have, do you have me on Twitter or Instagram or any of those things? When you watch, will you message me and let me know what you think of the first season? There's one episode in particular, I don't even want to say it, but uh, you'll know. <laughs> you'll know. My character is the lead of that episode, and again, I don't know why people <laughs> seem to think some episodes I'm in are great television, but... Um, I, I'm excited for you to uh, explore the journey. If you want to start with one episode, you can uh, you can do Super Soft Birthday. Yeah. Thank you very much. I will do that. Yeah. But watch the whole show, or else. <laughs> no. Thank you very much. Pacific Northwest, British Columbia. What's up? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Um, I was wondering, like, when you want Supernatural, who are like some of your favorite like people to work with? <laughs> Um, thank you for your question. <laughs> you did great. You're good. You're okay. Um, Mark, Mark Shepard. Uh, don't say it too loudly. Uh, <laughs> when I first met that guy, I thought he hated me. <laughs> I was like, why is he treating me this way? I don't even know this man. I turned out, no, no, he, he was actually very, very kind. He was the one who told me that he's like, hey, you know, you've done a number of episodes. You should consider doing conventions and stuff. The fans, I think, would love you down there. So he was the first one who told me about this amazing, amazing um, community. Uh, yeah, fucking A. Cheers to that. Um, and he was really gracious, you know? Um, he was, uh, his character was obviously uh, not a very nice man to a lot of characters, but when the, the camera stopped rolling, he was nothing but gracious. And I've got to meet him over the years at experience, uh, conventions and stuff like this, and he's just a freaking, freaking beauty. Um, yeah, obviously Jared and Jensen are nice guys too, but uh, Mark was one that I was like, oh man, like this guy's, I guess, just a really good actor. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your question. You're up. Hi, Kelly Hi. from Kansas. Nice Hi, Kelly. To see you. Nice to see you too. Okay, back to bugs. Let's go. All right, this is my my question. Did you have to train to hold spiders? Or, like, did, <laughs> like freak me out. So yeah. I don't know. How did you? Are you just a natural born spider handler? <laughs> <laughs> you know me well. <laughs> no, they had to make. Um, they had to make sure we were familiar with insects and stuff. Uh, so, like I mentioned, uh, before we shot the episode, they had brought us to the bee catcher, and they put this little, like, um, filter in between us and the bee, and had the bee sting us. The filter was to prevent the bee from dying. They didn't want to sting us with bees and have all these bees dying. Um, so the filter kept the bee alive, and they checked to see if any of us were allergic. None of us were. And then, uh, and then while we were on set, um, it sounds so weird. <laughs> A white van pulled up <laughs> and uh, opened the side door and told me to get in. And I'm like, yeah, sure, I'm on set. <laughs> Everything's safe. No, um, he was a he was a insect wrangler uh, is what what I guess his title would be. So he did have a white van. I was kind of joking about that second part. And he did open the door. Uh, I did not get in though. And uh, he had beetles and praying mantises and tarantulas and pretty much any insect you could think of. And uh, he had a tarantula walk up my arm and on my shoulder. And there's this picture, maybe I'll try and find later, but the tarantula is actually on my head for a portion of the, uh, 
So he made sure that we were comfortable so we didn't have any freaking freakouts on set or accidentally hurt the spiders or hurt the insects because that's the last thing we wanted to do. So yeah, they did make sure that I, I got acquainted with the tarantula and the bees and the praying mantises. So the answer is yes. I, I don't think I'm a spider, what'd you say? Spider handler, natural spider handler. I'm actually terrified of spiders, to be honest with you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> Kelly. Thank you, Kelly from Kansas. Hi. Hi. I'm Erin. Hi, Erin. I uh, was wondering if the, uh, my partner and I are rewatching Letterkenny from the beginning. Thank and you. I've been thinking about the, uh, the character development of all the characters. Like you mentioned earlier, um, Wayne and Stuart like, getting along better now. Had that been kind of like a plan from, uh, as the show developed, like to have the group of characters begin to get along better? Like what do you think about that development as it's played out? Yeah, I think that was kind of part of uh, part of the idea was that we always used to joke. It's like uh, the characters of Letter Kenny are kind of like your little brother, your little sister, you know? It's like I can pick on him or her, but as soon as someone else picks on him or her, then we have an issue. Uh, and uh, I think it's just kind of been a natural process for the skids to kind of get more you know, invited. We used to joke, they're like, oh, they're letting us out of the basement. And, and like now we're at the bar and they're not throwing beers at us. It's like something's changed. Uh, we don't know exactly what, but I think it was sort of the, the, uh, the evolution of the show and having outsiders come in and like create havoc and like with Dirks and Katie, that whole incident. That actually, to answer that previous question, this might be one of my favorite moments, but Dirks, um, spoiler alert to those who haven't seen it, che uh, cheats on Katie and Wayne comes and collects the whole cast of Letter Kenny and we drive to beat the crap out of this guy is kind of what happened. So that was a really sweet episode, sweet moment for us as a cast. And when I watched the episode, it actually made me tear up a little bit. Yeah. So I think it was part of the plan. And thanks for re-watching. Do you have a favorite episode? Oh gosh, I think the slumber party episode. Nice, the sleepover. Yeah, nice. Good pick, good pick. Thank you. We know that Samandrel and Stort have polar opposite personalities, but I was just wondering which one do you think closely resembles your own? <laughs> the meth dealing, basement dwelling, cyber goth, cigarette selling to kids. Uh, probably the other one. <laughs> Uh, no, you know, a lot of my, uh, my silly mannerisms and my sense of humor does come out in Stuart a lot. I've, I've managed to kind of uh, find, you know, they say that with any actor, like when they're finding a character, you want to you wanna find yourself in that character. Uh, but for those reasons that I just described, I'm not going to pick Stuart as that option. Uh, though I probably have more similarities to him than I would like to admit. Um, I like to think I'm an angel. <laughs> so it's all the best parts from either character. Thank you. Guys. Thank you very much for your question. Hello. Hi, my name is Brooke, and um, my best friend Ariana from Texas loves the show Letter Kenny. And when I told her you were here, she wanted me to ask you a question. And she wants to know when you're playing Stuart, how you're able to keep such a good straight face playing that character. <laughs> Well, if anyone else on set was as funny as me, it wouldn't be so hard. To... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope you guys know I'm joking. <laughs> um, rehearsal, to answer your question. Uh, me and Evan, who, who's my co-star on that show, we rehearse a lot because for the reason I, I mentioned previously, I don't know the words a lot of the time, I don't know the dialogue, and our, page, and our scenes are four or five pages long. So if you're not prepared, you could show up to set and you are the one holding the whole production up and there's no worse feeling than that. If you keep messing up your lines over and over again and the whole crew is waiting for you to get through this and you didn't do your one job of memorizing your lines. So Evan and I get together before we get to set. We think of some fun moments. We rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. We get all of our laughter out. We find some fun moments. We poke fun at each other and then we get to set and it's business time. Uh, I've never said business time before. Um, <laughs> it's business time. Uh, and we don't have a lot of time on set because our show moves so quickly. We shoot the whole season in like 20 days sometimes. So you'll have two takes and we're moving on. So we don't have a lot of time to break, to be honest with you. But if you look at the bloopers, there's plenty of me breaking. There's one recently, Evan, he uh, was trying to make me 
me laugh. And he was talking and exhaling his lines all down my arm from my shoulder to my <laughs> fingers. And then he rolled over my lap and then did the same thing with my fingers up to my, my shoulder. And then he finished his line with his lips in my ear. And we hadn't discussed or established any of this. And of course I break because I can freaking smell what he's had for lunch through my ear. Um, so I definitely, I definitely break though. But it's fun making other people break. It's fun making other people break. Yeah. So tell your, well, you, your friend watches, your partner watches the show? Yeah, I've watched it too, but she freaked out when I, when I told her you were here. And so she also says, wondrous. Apparently that's a word you say. <laughs> that's what I say all the time. So tell her wondrous back. Thanks for the question. <laughs> Hi, Lisa from Georgia. Um, Lisa, was it? Lisa from Georgia. Hello. Hey. Um, I was wondering what uh, the plans are for, like, in the future for Letter Kenny and uh, other projects that you're working on. Thank you for the question. We uh, just shot six episodes this summer that's come and gone, so we've got another season in the works. Uh, we just did a nor uh, North and was actually American uh, Letter Kenny Live tour last year. We did 30 shows, oh sorry, 33 shows in 30 cities. So we went all across America. We were in Seattle, Portland, New York, Las Vegas, uh, Texas, uh, Oklahoma. Uh, we went everywhere. So we did an amazing, amazing two month tour. We were all on a bus, eight dudes, and then the woman who plays Mich uh, Katie, her name is Michelle. Uh, so you can imagine how that got. Um, and uh, hopefully some more seasons and more tours to come. I think the tour went really, really well. We actually had a show at the Cosmo here in town, so maybe we'll get to do some more touring in the future. Hopefully we get to do many, many more seasons in the future. It's, it seems like the show is just picking up steam every year. Um, and personally, I've uh, purchased the option to the rights of a book based in Vancouver called The Last Gang in Town. And um, ideally, I would love to produce it into maybe an eight-part, ten-part miniseries um, and uh, throw myself a role in there. So uh, Letter Kenny's role in, and I'm hoping to maybe step into, and I don't want to like, I don't want to make it a bigger deal than it is because I'm just, I'm learning. I don't know anything about producing. But I did purchase the option to the rights, not the book, but the option to the option. It's just very complicated. <laughs> oh, hoping to make a series as a producer with my production company. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Hi, uh, Kelly from Kansas made me really want to come up here because of the alliteration. I'm Kim from Colorado. All right. <laughs> Kim with a C? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but I've been sitting there and mulling it over and I really just wanted to know what kind of beer. Super important <laughs> question. What kind of beer was it that you had? Last night? Yeah. Oh, I had three different beers. Oh. Um, the first, the first one was uh, it was a Dos Equis with a lime Solid. in it, very tasty. Second one was a Miller Light, uh, didn't like it. Yeah. Kind of, kind of skunky. Like I did, I drank it, uh, didn't like it. And then the third one, I was at a casino, people watching, and um, it would have been maybe like a Modelo or something like that. I think I need some beer options. Is there like any beers that you'd recommend, like a Moo Moo? There are a lot. You know, beer connoisseurs Blue Blue here. There's a gal that actually does beer. She's here beer tasting. But uh, Amber Ales are really good. Alaska Is that her name? It's <laughs> <laughs> so, right. They haven't brought a hook out yet. <laughs> so there's a person here doing beer tastings? Yeah, I believe her name's Tracy. But Beer tasting? Is that an establishment? Brewer, Ed Brewer and Distiller. Do you have any sample? Yeah, products. Brewer dog on the strip, and then on the strip there's Okay, Brew dog. Okay, thank you very much. Brew dog, you got me hooked up. Thank you for the question. The alcohol section. Hi, uh, I was wondering. Um, well, actually, somebody took my question, but um, in 2020, the world shut down. What did you, did you do anything? Did you learn a new hobby? Did you try something new? What were you doing in 2020? I learned uh, four languages, six <laughs> musical instruments. <laughs> I uh, don't, no, I didn't do anything. Uh, I'm not even going to lie to you. Um, I got pretty good at Call of Duty. 
I would go for daily walks, listen to audio. I got big into audio books during that time. I'd go for long, extended walks. Basically, at the beginning of COVID, of course, no one knew what the heck was going on. So we were all staying away from people in general. And I would just be in my back alley pacing uh, for kilometer, walking back and forth, listening to an audio book for just hours. I imagine that probably looked pretty psychotic, but um, I got into audio books, uh, Call of Duty. Um, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I wish I, wish I could tell you I did more with my time, but uh, I would be lying to you. I'm not going to lie to you. Did you, did you learn any new skills? Did you learn any new skills? Did, did? I tried to teach myself how to play guitar. It didn't work. <laughs> I tried that too. Thank you for your question. And nice seeing you. Hi, my name is Elise. I'm from here. From Vegas? Yeah. Born and raised? No, the Rio. Sorry, what? Born and raised? No, I just moved here a year ago. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, my question is, if you hadn't received the roles that you did in Supernatural, what role would you have wanted to get? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> Maybe Rob. I mean, you got to be Chuck after all, right? I mean, that's, that's a pretty good role. And that's a pretty good one. Hmm, maybe, I don't know, maybe Jared? <laughs> I mean, it could have been Jared's role? Oh, yeah, I'm about the same height? What do you guys think? <laughs> Some riffs. <laughs> maybe Jared? And then I could work with Jensen all day, every day, and cuddle up? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Is that it for questions? Oh, we got another question. Hi. Hello. My name is Grace. Hi, Grace. Nice to meet you. Nice so I was wondering, if you could be a character in any book, who would you want to be? That's a cool question. I just watched the Harry Potter reunion recently. So Harry Potter popped in my head, but I'm not going to pick that. Because I wouldn't be Harry Potter anyway. I'd probably want to be one of the other characters. <laughs> any book? What's a good book I've read recently? I mean... I'm reading lots of nonfiction, so I don't think I should be any of those characters. <laughs> um, you know, maybe Peter Pan. <laughs> maybe I'll be Peter Pan. Yeah. I mean, I get to wear the green tights and everything. It'd be awesome. Yeah. Peter Pan. <laughs> Thanks for your question. Nice Hello again. again. Just so you know, the people who are asking questions have problems hearing you because the speakers are all loud. Yeah, so. I appreciate that. Oh, sorry. Trying to be closer. Um, so as Stuart, you've had to <laughs> snort many things on the show. Allegedly. Did you actually, did you get anything fun? You know, did you have to sneeze for an hour after the day? <laughs> yeah, you know, sometimes with those uh, fake drugs, um, it does drip in the back of your throat. Uh, I've, I've uh, never done drugs, but uh, from what I hear, uh, you will have a drip in the back of your throat. So one of the times it was like a, like a very light sort of icing sugar type material, and I definitely had a sweet drip in the back of my throat. And it wasn't cool. <laughs> it wasn't like a little drip of candy in the back of my throat every you know, minute or two. It was a, it was a gnarly, gnarly drip. But yeah, I've had headaches for sure, um, sinus issues for sure. Um, it's not fun, but it's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when we have like those monster, uh, monster rips in some of the seasons where like the, you know, the line of cocaine is as big as this microphone. <laughs> and they like want to sit and like, I can't do that. How big do you think my nostrils are? <laughs> so yeah, many, many fake drug addicts. Hello again. Hello again. So you talked about listening to a lot of audiobooks. I was wondering if you could narrate any book for an audiobook, what book would you narrate? I was actually just thinking about this the other day. Um, and I was thinking more specifically to that book that I told you about that I purchased the rights to. I think that would be kind of cool if I could make that into a TV series and then was able to record the audiobook to have like a full experience with that. I think that would be pretty, pretty neat. And honestly, like the um, industry for recording audiobooks is growing and growing and growing, so I might actually have to talk to my agent about that. Uh, there was this great series of um, children's books back in the day. I don't know if it was down here, but it was called the Screech Owls series, uh, which was like a mystery series for young, young kids. Uh, 
young, young hockey team. They'd go around and solve mysteries. So maybe I'd like to narrate those uh, those books. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are asking really fun questions today, making me think. I'm glad I'm not hungover. <laughs> Hi there. Hello. Uh, I was just wondering what some of your favorite dialogue from Letterkenny has been. Uh, maybe some of your favorite quotes or some of the favorite things that you've said throughout the show. Yeah, Wondrous would have to be uh, at the top of that list. Um, yeah, you know, a lot of the times I like input the words and then I say them and then I just try and exit them out of my brain as soon as I can. <laughs> Um, the, uh, the day in which I was with Jared, though, I'm a big Vancouver Canucks fan, and he written in the dialogue all of Stewart's favorite players and enforcers growing up were all Vancouver Canucks. So that was a fun little uh, moment, like a little Easter egg, I guess you could say, for me and Jared. Uh, that was a really fun dialogue. I also um, really loved the storyline with um, the character uh, Gay, Gay, who was played by Sarah Gaddon. And uh, the freaks acting crazy united, you know. Uh, give us three reasons why you feel you must rebel. I hate the world. I hate my parents. I hate myself. That's my character in a nutshell. Hello. Hi. I'm a big fan of the SPN Then and Now podcast. And I was wondering what the process was like for being on the podcast. And what, w what was your reaction to being asked to talk about an episode from like 18 years ago? Was it 18 years ago? <laughs> Half your life. <laughs> oh, you are not far off. Wow. Um, Rob reached out via Instagram, I believe, and said, Hey, buddy, hope you're well. Doing this podcast uh, with, uh, with Rich. Would you like to come on, and I said, abso freaking lutely we'll be discussing the uh, the Bugs episode, so they got the, the woman who wrote the episode, and myself, um, and uh, they zoomed in, so, you know, I got my best Zoom face on, and uh, set up my backdrop as if my spare bedroom isn't just a mess, because you could just see the books, uh, it looked, I looked really smart, and uh, we talked about the episode, I actually rewatched it just a few days prior to have, you know, context, and, um, it was a walk down memory lane. I probably haven't watched that episode for 16, 17 years. Um, brought back lots of memories um, and uh, getting to talk about it with those guys and to have you guys be able to listen to that was uh, pretty cool. I think it's amazing what they're doing. I mean, I, I imagine as fans of the show, you guys got to be probably digging that. Uh, yeah. Um, and Frick, I mean, how many episodes of Supernatural are there? 327? So that's a long way to go, long way to go. And you know what, I hope they ask me to come back and talk about some Andriel. Um, I don't know when that will be, I don't know how their shooting schedule is, but uh, maybe 16 more years from now, I'll be <laughs> up on the podcast again. But no, those guys, when I first came down here, 2015 I think was my first convention, I think it might have been in Vegas actually, and, and everyone was so, so nice to me. Rob and Rich were freaking just, everyone's just, Embrace me with open arms, and uh, whenever I have an opportunity to kind of pay it back, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. That's it. No more questions. Talk about your interview, your revolution. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Uh, we've called revolution, right? Yeah. Uh, Eric Kripke went, I did a fun story I shared this morning. Eric Kripke did a, a show called Revolution. I don't know if you guys ever saw that. So I auditioned for the lead young man on that, and I got a call back, and it was in Los Angeles, so this would probably have been 10 years ago, plus maybe, and um, went to the call back, and Eric Kripke was there, and John Favreau was there, and I remember walking around the corner and being like, wow, Favreau is in this audition room, that's pretty neat. I get in, I hand him my resume, and uh, Favreau says, hi, Eric Kripke, he's like, hey, Tyler, he looks at my resume, he's like, oh, you were on Supernatural. I was like, yes, I was. He goes, what episode? I said, well, the Bugs episode. And he goes, ooh, he's like, yeah, that's, he looks at John, he's like, that's, that's our worst episode. Uh, you know, the fans, fans really didn't like that episode. He's like, it wasn't you, Tyler, it's the bugs, the bugs, the CGI fans weren't really into it. We didn't really like, and he starts telling me all the reasons why this episode was the worst episode of the, you know, 150 or 80 they'd done at that point in time. And I'm sitting up here super nervous. It's a big, big moment in my career. Um, John Favreau and Kripke are there, and I'm just sitting here, like, hearing him destroy this episode that I was in. 
And then John Favreau turns to Kripke and he's like, hey, hey, he's like, let's just let the kid read. <laughs> he's like, he's like, let's just let the kid get out of this room because they could tell I was sweating and nervous. And, uh, so then I left. I felt like I had a great audition. And then I left and then I got a call from my agent saying the microphone um, wasn't on. So I had to go back the next day and do the audition again. And Eric and John Favreau weren't there anymore. And it's like the energy of the whole thing, it just kind of changed. There was no direction anymore. I didn't get the job. I just wished the audio from that day, because I'm, you know, over the uh, pandemic, acting has changed. People are taping their auditions more. And I was a big fan of going into the room, meeting the people who were casting, having some conversations, maybe some direction and going from there. I'm not a big fan of the posting, uh, filming at home and sending it off, and filming at home and sending it off, because you don't hear anything often, you don't get any feedback. So for me to be in the room with Eric and John Favreau that day, I feel like the energy would have been at least there. Uh, so to go back the next day, it was just not the same thing. Thanks for that story, that's a fun one. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the worst episode we've ever done. <laughs> um, any other stories that I can share about my supernatural time? Or Letterkenny. Or Letterkenny. Mm. Or anything. We had a fun, we had a fun little story about Letterkenny. There's um, a Will William White equipment. It's like the, they do the lights and the, the gaffing. They have a big, 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 big equipment company in Toronto. And they wanted to come up and play the Letterkenny cast at hockey. You know, we got a good hockey team. We're playing all the time. We would like to play you Letterkenny guys. So we actually brought our hockey equipment to Sudbury, Ontario that winter. And I'm from Vancouver, so it's a lot to carry a hockey bag or travel with a hockey bag. These uh, people came up. We were all getting ready for the weekend game. And uh, we, we ended up beating them like 11 to 1. <laughs> and we did not relent. We just kept scoring and scoring and scoring. And uh, Dylan Playfair, who is one of the hockey players on Letterkenny, scores his third goal to make it 11 to 1. And he skates to the corner and jumps up against the boards like he just won the Stanley <laughs> Cup or something. <laughs> So we go to the bar after with, with, with these, 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 this team and we're all having a great time. And one of the guys just pulls me aside. He goes, why did you, why did you guys feel so hell-bent on destroying us? <laughs> I was like, well, you, you guys challenged us. You came up to our set like we thought we were like in for a game. Turns out they were just there to have fun. <laughs> just, uh -oh. And yes, I did score a goal that game, if you're asking. <laughs> One for 11, I guess it's not, not that great, but. Better than nine. Better than nine. Probably got a, I used to get a bunch of penalties back in the day too. I used, I've been suspended a few times for spearing and butt ending. He's younger than me, I've changed. <laughs> Hello again. Hi again. Um, so your wardrobe in Letterkenny is quite different. You know, you're quite wearing like a wig and a hat and things. Um, do you, find that you get recognition or do you more or less stay stealth? Whereas like the Alfie character was very much, you know, short hair. It's, it's, you're very clearly the same person. Uh, do I get recognized for Stuart as Tyler? It does happen from time to time. It happened yesterday actually when I was ordering a drink, which was pretty cool. It would have been cooler if that person gave me the drink, but uh, <laughs> I paid full price. Um, when I'm with my castmates, I get recognized a lot more. Like Dylan, who's got the big jaw, long hair. Evan, who plays my co-star, he's very recognizable as well. So I do get recognized from time to time, but uh, the, the wig definitely helps me go incognito. And it also helps me get into character. When I'm on set, put the wig on, paint my nails black. I paint my nails every day, because um, I'm not the kind of guy who can pull off black nail polish on his everyday life. But um, the wig helps get in character, the nail polish gets in character, and, I've had nothing but amazing fan interactions when I do get noticed. I just hope it happens earlier in the night and not later in the night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, how, how did he do? Did we start it off right? I had no doubt. I had no doubt. Forever, Thank you very much. We will always remember the first ever this is creation me. tour. Well done, sir. Well Thank done. you, sir. Thank you, guys. Tyler Johnson, everybody. This next guest 
I just, I want you to be ready to be wowed. I believe, I believe we met her in about 2008, 2006 maybe. And I don't, I don't know, I don't, there's some sort of strange thing happening. She looks younger now than she did then. And I don't know how that's possible. But if you guys would do us a favor and help us welcome the lead actor in the Loudon Swain video, so much to say, something to say. <laughs> Please give it up for Julie McNiven. Love it. Good you. <laughs> okay, on that note, um, what's going on? What have, what have you guys been up to? Did anyone go horseback riding yesterday? One person, two, three. How was it? Was it fun? Awesome. It was sore. Yes, I haven't horseback. I haven't done horseback riding since. I don't know, 10 or 11? So I, I imagine I would be quite sore from that. Um, do you guys wanna just get to it? Does it how, how are we doing this? Are we passing a mic around or are we just yelling? <laughs> oh, we have a mic over there? Oh, okay. All right, well, um, go get in line, people. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, I know the song was something to say. I don't have anything to say. It was a long time ago. Um, yes, we have someone over here. Hello. What's your name? No, you being shy? Hi. Hi, my name is Brooke. Hi, I'm Brooke. I'm a local here from awesome. Las Vegas. Um, so you starred in season four, and I wanted to know what the audition process was like and what they told you your role was gonna be when you auditioned. Sure, so yeah, uh, I think there were like maybe three scenes I had the original audition. Um, I'm pretty sure it was in, uh, in the asylum. We did that scene with the doctor. Um, I can't remember the other scenes, but that was the or original audition and that was just in like a tiny office um, with Robert Ulrich, who does the casting, or did the casting. Um, and then the callback was on the WB lot with uh, Sarah Gamble, who wrote that episode, and Eric. And uh, that, for the callback, then they uh, gave me a bunch of scenes where I realized I'd turn into an angel. Um, I don't remember which ones. But I remember thinking, damn, that audition went really well. <laughs> and then I got it. Uh, and then um, I show up for, like right when you land in Vancouver, sometimes they take you right to set, you go do your wardrobe fitting, just so they can you know, do any alterations before your first day. Um, and they had me trying on underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, you know, I, had, I had done seasons on Mad Men, and so on Mad Men, we were given not like, I mean, I, I wasn't given underwear per se, but I was given, you know, the corset, that whole thing. And I thought, oh, is that like, they're really like hardcore about, you know, characters. You have to know what kind of underwear you're wearing. <laughs> and so I didn't say anything right away. And we were just trying them on and they were like, what do you think about this? Like, okay, yeah. And then I, I finally was like, so why, why do I need underwear? <laughs> so that's when I found out that I needed underwear for the scene where my pants came off. <laughs> so yeah, that's how I learned. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much it. Thank you. Of course.
Hello. Hi, Julie. I'm Erica from California. And I just want to know what it was like kissing. No, just kidding. Not just kidding. <laughs> um, I don't know if you remember, but back like before COVID, on Twitter, um, I was the one who kept saying, Julie, we want you at the conventions. We want you. And look, we're both here. Oh. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I just wanted to say, yay, you're here and I'm here and I'm so glad. Oh, I love and your thank character. you. And honestly, that's such a great way to, I mean, like on, tw too close to on Twitter, Instagram, wherever, to. <laughs> it's demons. Here, they're coming. <laughs> so it's not haunted? It's just technical difficulties? It's so boring. Um, yeah, Twitter and uh, Instagram, all the social media platforms are such a great way for you guys to, one, communicate with, with us, but also tell, you know, to tell the cons, where, wherever you're, whatever con you're near, to tell them that you want to see certain people that are on the regular roster, you know? It's, it's, it's great, so thank you. Yay, well, thank you. Hello. Hi, Julie. Hi. Uh, and I'm with her. So happy to see you here Thank you. this Vegas weekend. Uh, I think you're beautiful. I'm super excited. And uh, on that, I would like to know, you got to spend a lot of time with Jensen on all the episodes <laughs> that you were in. Did you happen to know how roomy that back seat was? <laughs> um, it was quite roomy because the car actually comes apart. That's how you do it in the back seat, is that you do it in a car that comes apart. <laughs> I mean, I, I can't recommend another way. Um, yes, no, he was a wonderful scene partner, um, complete, absolute gentleman, made me feel really uncomfortable. I come off of another job where I was <clears throat> in my underwear and, uh, and, I, and I was caught off guard on that first job, like, didn't realize how much was showing. And so I had told him that, and you know, uh, while we were shooting, he made sure because uh, I think you know when you're not a regular on the show, when you when you're new to the business, when you're a woman basically, and you're afraid that if you say something, they'll just fire you, which is so stupid, but it's just the truth. Um, now I don't care, and I will say something. Like they can fire me, I don't care if it's if, if I get fired for saying something not a job worth having but um, but I was young and really excited to be there and so he kind of helped me make sure that I was I was feeling comfortable that I knew what was being shown um, and we would you know watch a playback or turn the camera around so that this is the angle like you know it's it's an incredibly technical thing to shoot any sort of love scene. It's not sexy, it is not comfortable, it is completely technical. So, um, so he kind of just let me know that I, I can say something. <laughs> so yeah. Hello. Um, I want, hi I'm Sky.